Hello and welcome to the all new Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. All right. You say, uh, all new, Rick. What, yeah. In what way is this all new? I mean, it seems very similar. It's me and ah. Carl. I suspect we're going to be talking bollocks. I'll tell you what's new about it. This time you have to pay for it. <laughs> well, that is a nice new development. Yeah. Uh, but what about within the content of the show? Any of the classic features? Monkey News? Well, I think Carl retired Monkey News. I don't know why. why so that's you been axed. It's just, we, we'd sort of done it all. Do you know what I mean? The, but will he be coming back in the future? Uh, we might do something with it, yeah. Good. I think there'll be a campaign, you know. If I know, uh, our listeners, and I don't want to, <laughs> then they'll be doing an internet campaign now to bring back Monkey News. I just want a quick, quick question, because I'm a bit confused. Is this show 13, because we've just done 12, or is this show one of the All New Ricky Gervais Show? I didn't know where we show are. Show one of the All New Ricky Gervais Show. Right. Is it now? What do you mean? Well, that, that's like that question that I put to you about, say, say if like we, I don't know, we, we do something wrong to this world. Yeah. Um, runs out of whatever we need. I don't know how it works. Mm. Um. You put yourself down. I think you do. And I think you No, just, just whatever, gone. whatever the reason is, if it, uh, You're talking, you are talking yourself out of a job with NASA, putting yourself down like that. I think you know exactly how the world works. No, 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 but you know, just like, um. Say if we had to go to another world, mm. right? What year would it be? Yeah, I, I, I explain. I d told you it depends because it doesn't matter where you start, right? It depends what a year is. A year is a year because that's how long it takes our planet to go round our sun. A day is a day because that's how long it takes the world to re uh, revolve. I once. know, but you can't you can't go to another world and then start. Changing everything because people are going to be a bit unnervy about being on different soil. So but it's not their saying, choice. You can't go to a planet and go. Mm, we've got to speed this planet up. It's not all going through the space quickly enough. Yeah, but everybody's. You know, like especially older people, they set in the ways, right? I don't think older people set in their ways are going to pack their bags and go to Mars. No, but if they have to. Anyway, that that isn't the point. All, all I'm well, saying. Well, they're going to be moaning about days are shorter here or days are longer, aren't they? Well, yeah, you know what they like. But Change. All people don't care. They like short days. They don't get out of bed, do they, until late? They've got nothing to get up for, and they go to bed early. Yeah, but it's not just that, is it? What if it's a longer day, Steve? Oh, nightmare. That's your point, isn't it? But I'm talking about stationery, diaries. Everything's going to be a mess. Right. So what do you do? If I was in charge, go on. I, I'd just say, yeah, carry on. It's uh, 2007. It's September. It's a Thursday. Get on with it. Brilliant. I think, I think because people 26 are 26 hours later, uh, with a new day, and, uh, well, 480 I days later, or oh, another year, 2008. I was trying to explain to him yesterday, uh, in a cafe, about, um, the telescopes that can see back to the Big Bang. Why? And, Did you do well, that? Well, I was trying to explain what a light year was, then I was explaining to him that, you know, you sit down, you, you put your, your telescope on, you're looking at a star, the star explodes, that star exploded a million years ago and he couldn't have it. I was going, you're literally seeing it explode a million years ago because that's how long the light got out. And I started telling him that, you know, um, someone on another planet far, far away could be watching the 1980 World Cup final if they had a strong enough telescope because it, that's yeah, how long it yeah. took to get. Uh, it, it, look at it, look at his face. It, I can see his head bleeding. I just don't. So are you saying. Why did you start doing this in a cafe? Was it a 24 hour cafe? <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> but are you saying then there could be an alien fella? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that just like we can see things happening in other uh, on other planets, other solar systems um, that happened millions of years ago, um, there could be a little alien fella with a telescope uh, watching the Battle of Hastings if he was far enough away. Do you understand the concept of what Ricky's saying that light? is travelling at a certain speed, which means it so, hasn't necessarily arrived here yet. So we could all relive history, though, is what I mean. No, if we couldn't, because we, we- No, but we're, we're backwards. We'd, 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 well, no. Well, one, you'd have to travel faster than the speed of light. Yeah, I know, but say if we can do all that. Well, that that's the big thing. You can't. No, I know, but, but, you know, it's only a matter of time, isn't it? Why haven't we? Hmm. No, but we're not in a rush to do it, because we can just go back in time. Well, but if time travel's possible, right, eventually, then it's already happened and they've come back. Yeah, no, but what what I mean is, it's one of those inventions that we're not in a rush to do. Because no, what I'm saying is, if it's if it's possible, then it will happen, and if it will happen, it has in the future. 
Yeah, but we don't know about that yet, do we? No, but you see my point. Not really. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's not that great just because you you're seeing that far because there's nothing in the way. You're looking at nothing. Space is nothing. What are you looking at? Mm. They say. What do they say? I don't know. If only you had a saying there yeah. at your fingertips. What I mean is the universe, they say it's it, it's non-stop, there's no sides to it. No, they don't say that. Scientists have never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in, he says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Okay, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you What would you make him do? What would you uh, What conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say I'm not bothered, and that'd be <laughs> the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he does he think the same way? Look the same way? Exactly the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which that's one I was? That's incredible. No, because- That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? I mean, uh, out there, listen, people are, have you heard anything more stupid than how would I know which one I was? It's the most stupid thing any human being has ever said by definition. But think about it, this other person's going, all right, thanks for, uh, Meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you go, should I be leaving? Or, so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because yeah, you're but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it's a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the truth, up. you idiot. Because How would I know which one I was? So anyway. But bear in mind, you what could, would pass, you do? You could I, pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks with Would you, uh, you know? You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? Like jackass? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, wouldn't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> it can only- I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a- it, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because <laughs> he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was, we... like, that was like experiencing what it would be like if there was two cars. <laughs> yeah. He's we, a discussion with himself. we could have left in yeah. that time and come back and he'd be arguing still. That, that, that is officially the most stupid thing. If the Guinness World Records, it, it, has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But does this mean, <laughs> does this mean... <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on- Yes. And any- any- when he- when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No. No, 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 no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger then, Well, you're identical twins then. You found out identical twins and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little- again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a- it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't- they don't carry that thing on, do they, that normal twins do? Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say, have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head! It's unbelievable! Okay, we're trying to get more cerebral now in this in this podcast. There's a lot of science here, real science. Um, maybe we should call it a spodcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carl. This is a a, 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 a logical um, a conundrum um, to a certain extent. There's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right because I don't know anyone who's ever got this right. The pressure is. One, are, are asking 
sensible questions, okay. and when I've told her the answer, to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so, there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical, you can't tell them apart, okay, 50-50. Right. Obviously you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, okay. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay. Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which which is which and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. rules are, you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's, it's a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door <laughs> to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. They're identical. The guards are identical. But the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. What do you ask? What do you ask? What question do you ask? Come on, you only got one. Quick, this is it. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both looked the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah, well, you want, the one guarding hell always tells a lie, the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. These, these things you know. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> <laughs> Why <have> I... <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get I'll on. I'll give I mean... you a clue, I'll give you a clue. They know who they are, and they know that the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. So I know that. No, they know it as well. It doesn't really come down to this, Carl. This isn't what's gonna happen when you die. But when is this useful then? Cause it's a logic- well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I wanna see if he can get it, he's almost there. Uh No, he's not almost there, what am I thinking? But there's, there, there's no shame in not getting it. It's there's no one. shame you, in not yeah. getting it. It's a really hard one to get. The, what, what, I mean, the shame is the ridiculous questions you asked. Um, and now I'm gonna tell you the answer. No, hang on, right, so you go up and yeah. you go, um, you Right, go hang on, well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, well me, and, me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh, look, look away, Carl. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided. Okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, uh, got some. Uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some post for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's right. coming. I got. You got some post for God here. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just uh. Well, no, you've only got one question. So you're you're asking Steve is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, cut, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. It doesn't help. That doesn't help. But let me tell you the answer. You ask either one of us, you say, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? Then whatever they say is the door they're guarding. 
because if you happen to ask the one guarding hell, right? So I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So you know I'm guarding hell. If you ask Steve what door I was guarding, he'd tell the truth, right? So he'd say, he'd say heaven, because he'd know I'd lie. So he's guarding heaven. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know, you know, that doesn't work. Because you ask me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> Chimpanzee, that he's written it down. What? Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Still a very popular feature on show one slash thirteen. Uh, here we are. Got a book sent to me called Freaks. It's a bit heavy, but it's got some interesting pictures in it. Read a bit about the two-headed nightingale. She slash they was on tour in London years and years ago. It cost two shillings to have a front row seat. She slash they had two heads slash two arms and four legs. They are called Siamese twins because the first twins that were born stuck together were Siamese. On one of the pictures they are playing chess against the doctor. That hardly seems fair. <laughs> <laughs> two heads are better than one. <laughs> So it's two heads, two arms, and four legs. That's just two women in one dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's two women with an arm missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh... You know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what's he been doing with that mirror and that? But- <laughs> that, that was, What? <laughs> no, just, you so, know. Just, what? What? What has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's he been doing? Why, 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 No, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And- I don't know, what do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? What, what do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff- What? What? Of whatever they do. Chemistry, what? they have a chemistry set out, they'd be doing experiments, what? No, just doing what- Singing I am what I am and just checking out their- no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying like, they're doing what they're doing, uh, which- Carl, you're not having a well, yeah? you're not- No, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm not, this is what- why, well, but, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasizing what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous, this, mm. you know, it could crack and- Cause it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it took up a whole wall. Right. right. So, like, when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But, he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and, uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And, it looks all right, you, you wouldn't know and what have you, but it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's, that's all, that's all I'm saying. Because if I put a nail in and it- And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? Just, um, the way some people like, you know, the ones you've got, where it's just like a block of colour on a bit of canvas. It's like, what's, what's that? Just abstract. It's just abstract. It's, it's, you know, it's a vibrancy of colour. It's a, you know, an attack on the senses. Or it could be, there could be something in there that you might see. You might not see first time round, or it could be, you know. Yeah, but there's loads of stuff to look at without having to do that. But you've got windows. Of... I can understand if you had a cell and there's no windows and you want a bit of colour, but you've got oh, a window yeah. to look out of and, and you've got, like, just a big block of But, I was explaining on... this to you, that the, 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 the photograph where people 
before, um, you know, the art was photography, it was realistic, it was realistic, and, uh, you know, they had to make it look like the subject. But then, when cameras came in, that's when people started yeah, doing I, surreal stuff. And I understand it, cause it, that. that. Otherwise, there was no point to it. They had to find a new way to represent things that, f uh, photography couldn't do as such. No, so I, 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 that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. <laughs> like, well, just get some fruit, you know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with, like, having a... We'll, we'll get... Don't don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone, oh, I can't have paintings anymore because... What do you think of Dali? Going, melting clocks and stuff, no? I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he's he's just he's not he's not I mean what I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um he had some artist mate round, yeah. right? And um I don't know what happened. Uh, they oh, were okay. eating they were eating That's a hell of an anecdote. No no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. And uh yeah. <laughs> They, they were eating lobster, oh, right. and uh, that's Andy. I don't know the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of started saying, "Oh, you and your clocks and all that." Right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing, yeah. and he chucked some of the lobster bollocks, and it landed <laughs> on the it phone. Stuff his mate's head <laughs> went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And they they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Because happen. it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you mentioned in your diary, your favourite artist is Lowry. Because you can look at them for ages and see someone different every time you look at it. All I'm saying is, art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know colours out there, there's loads of colour. <laughs> We don't need to be reminded of it. <laughs> but colour's part of our evolution, and so it does something to us. Just Only like sounds, just like sounds. Yeah, but I'm saying do a picture. Smells. Colour it in. Still use the colours, but mm. draw something with it rather than just going, bit of yellow, bit of red. Like that when you've got just red and black. What, what, what's that meant to do? Well, it does something. What? Well, I like it. I enjoy it. So it does oh, something. Yeah, you, you have it then. I'm just saying, I'd, I prefer it if it was something. And it's so you, and what, let me just get straight. You had a mirror on one wall, so you you padded that wall. It's just and sort you of, padded the just, others. Uh, it's just sort of uh, wallpaper on it. Right. Amazing. And there's no other art in there. Not it's just an empty cell. Was Suzanne like, like some art? Just like uh, is it, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Some new words have been introduced into the dictionary. Too many words. <laughs> We should have some system where we can get rid of words if they aren't used a certain number of times. Well, that, that we do. They do die out, don't they, eventually? Like what? You don't have to use them. No, but they don't, do they? They keep adding them. And I just worry about, uh, you know, th this is the problem with, like, your head can only hold so much, can't it? Yeah. It all very well when Adam and Eve was knocking about. There's no history, they don't have to remember anything. <laughs> All I'm saying is, fine, bring out a new word, but once you bring out a new one, bin another one. The dictionary is getting bigger and bigger. No one's keeping an eye on it. <laughs> well, I think they are. They're not. They just they keep adding. It doesn't grow. It, they don't just dig it up one day. It's so, got bigger. What have you done? So you're Left happy, it out. You're happy for them to stick in iPod, let's say. But you we know. can pride ourselves on having more words in the English language than any other language. I think we've got twice as many as the second. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think maybe Russian. I'm not sure about that. Someone, I'm sure someone emails us, but but we don't it's... talk the most, so there's a lot of clutter there. <laughs> what do you mean we don't talk the most? Well, you'd you'd have to you'd, you'd nothing say nothing as expressive as the English language. Yeah, no, because we've got a word for everything. I just I'm I'm just saying that's that I don't use all these all these words that are coming out. 
and I just think, like I say, keep an eye on it. Some sort of- I don't know how it can be controlled. But Shakespeare invented words. I think Shakespeare invented about 1200 words. Yeah, and we're probably still using a lot of his, so why yeah. don't we keep sticking more in the pot? Right. Stop using loads of words. People are panicking in New York about the snow they're getting. It's two foot deep. They are saying it's to do with global warming. I don't get it. Two days ago they were saying the world's getting warmer and the ice is melting on one of the poles where the polar bears are. As long as we get snow on the world, does it matter where it goes? Read on the internet that heads are bigger now than they were years ago. Brains are getting bigger, apparently. This is because we're being told too much information. <laughs> we are Suck told too much swelling. stuff about things that we wouldn't have known about years ago. You've just made that leap, haven't you? Presume maybe br heads and brains are getting larger, but the fact that it's because there's too much information cramming in them. Where well, have you it got is that from? As, as time goes on, isn't it? It's that thing of um, we're being taught more and more every day. As the time goes on. Something's happening every day. You've got to remember that. No, you haven't. You have. It's the same, like I said, you know, with the Adam and Eve thing. They didn't have that much to remember. They come on the world, they go, what happened yesterday? Oh, not, not much, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in the all new Ricky Gervais show, um, there is no monkey news as such. That's gonna come back, Carl, you gotta bring that back. But we're gonna do something that we used to do on our local radio show called Rockbusters. Yeah. Sounds a bit like Blockbusters, a television program that used to be on television where they gave sort of real cryptic clues. Yours aren't cryptic clues, yours yeah. are ridiculous. So explain Rockbusters. Um, give out an initial of a artist or a band. Yeah. Uh, knocking about like now or ages ago. And I give a, uh, a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Um, Very rarely cryptic. Sometimes uh, it works, sometimes it's nonsense, but... Well, as, as we once said, I think it is more, um, accurately described, a craptic clue. Yeah. Well... Or, what am I thinking? Well, are you gonna give an example or will we just do them? The classic example, of course, for me is, um, a woman, she's an artist, the initials are WH, she was wandering around... Texas. ...in Texas, she fell over a part of her leg, fell in a puddle, Wet knee Houston. That is the level. That's what you're working with, people. So he's going to give three of these. The first email that gets them all right, the first email we get, and it's timed, isn't it, email, so we can know, that gets all these clues exactly right, can win, what, a, a signed photo of Carl? Now that is exclusive. There are not very many. I don't think they even exist, do they? There are no signed photos of Carl, so this will be an, a, a collector's item. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's three different ones. When you send it in on email, podcast at rickygervais.com, just put in the subject thing like Rockbusters so I know what I'm looking for. Mm. Right then, so three three different clues for you to work on. Uh, first one. Oh, shouldn't I do a jingle for this? Please. Okay. Oh, that sounds cryptic! No, I'm rubbing it in! Rockbusters. Uh, right, first one, the initial, right, is B. The right. initial B, band the B, or artist. So, band or an artist beginning with the letter B. Mm -hmm. The cryptic clue, well, I don't want a house that's that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Right? That's the cryptic clue. Well, I, I don't want a house that far away from the water. I want, I want, to, I want to be right on top of it. Right? B, artist or band, who is it? Right? Work on that one. Second one, it's B again. B, letter B for the band of the artist. All right. Cryptic clue, right? That part of my leg is English. That's right. it, is it? Yeah. Right. That part of my leg is English. Initial B, what is it? Part of my leg is English. And then the last one, uh, KW, artist the band, and the cryptic clue, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. What's going on there? Right, KW, the fitness, in, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. Work on them, right? Send in the answers, podcast.rickgervais.com and uh, just win some 
Is that a signed picture on that? A signed picture of Carl Pilkington. Also, when you're uh, sending in your answers, or indeed if you don't have the answers but you just want to get in touch, uh, podcast at rickygervais.com. If you've got anything that you think might be of interest to Carl, we're looking for, uh, as Ricky was uh, giving him earlier, scientific facts, um, stories you've read about, uh, you know, anything which you think might just pique his interest, uh, send them in, podcast at rickygervais.com. Well, that's it. That's the, uh, that's the end of, um, the first episode of the all new Ricky Gervais show. Sounded very similar to the old one. Yeah, the yeah. It's, it's why change your winning formula? Why, well, you know, exactly. And if you're missing the old ones, the complete archive of all our podcasts are available from next week. Go to audible.com, find out how to get to it. Absolutely. For any of your queries and questions, go to rickygervais.com. That tells you where you need to go for any, uh, Ricky Gervais podcasts or, or the new shows. It's all there. That'll explain it. So it's goodbye for me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Welcome to number two in this, uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. Well, uh, I've been away. Um, I had a little bit of a, an express tour of, uh, America, um, LA and New York. And, uh, they're all talking about one thing out there. Carl Pilkington. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I hooked up with the Simpsons lot. They all listened to it on their, their iPods. I went down to the American office to keep an eye on, you know, things. Yeah, check, check it, check it. Well, as we get money for old rope for yeah, doing yeah, next yeah, to nothing, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, I'd yeah. show him a face. Yeah. They're big fans, Carl. I, I met up with Jason Bateman, you know, Arrested Development, and, uh, he knows how stupid you are. David Letterman knows what an idiot you are. Mentioned on the Letterman show. I mean, unbelievable. David Bowie listens. And they're all listening to little Carl Pilkington. I think, when I think of people like that, like, like pretty much geniuses in their yeah, field. Yeah, sure, yeah. But, uh, when I think of Bowie listening to it, I still think of him as 26, dressed well, as- he's dressed as Ziggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. With a pair of those big 70s headphones. <laughs> yeah, and he's going, hey mom, can you turn the TV down and listen to Pilkington? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love his kooky outlook on life. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Christopher Guest. Now, Christopher Guest, um, empathises with you a little bit, because obviously everyone else sort of knows how stupid you are and not understanding concepts like, you know, the infinite amount of monkeys. But he empathises with that because he thinks that sometimes, he, he thinks that he sometimes doesn't understand concepts that uh, seem obvious to other people. However, um, I think he's being polite. I don't think you've got a lot in common with him because he did all the other genius stuff. You know, what you did was do the washing up with your pants pulled down slightly. You know, it didn't have the same effect to say. It's not been as influential as Spinal Tap. Oh, wait, for Guffman. <laughs> no. no. I mean, unless people, uh, maybe that's sweeping the nation now. Maybe if someone sees someone nude in a room opposite their house, they immediately they go, get their cock out. They go <laughs> genius. That's genius. Well, I did a, uh, uh, an appearance at the Oxonian Society in New York. It's a Princeton College, uh, run event and they have like academics, artists, political figures. They have, uh, heads of industry. They had world leaders. They've had Prince Hassan uh, of Jordan, and there was a Q and A afterwards. And one of the questions was, "Is monkey news coming back?" Yeah. In that sort of forum, mm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's. I believe they also asked that of uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> they did, yeah. Now, Carl, is, is monkey news coming back? I mean, maybe it depends what goes on out there. It's gone a bit quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> on, the man, well, on the monkey front. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that I don't know if they're aware or whatever that it's being covered, but it's just like, you know, <laughs> there's no point, liquid, you can't make news, can you? All these news channels, that's the problem with it. They've committed to saying we're a news channel, you got to find news, well don't do it like that. Sure. I'd say put something else on, if now what's going on Cartoons. in the world. Just, just- Is there just, often no news in the world? On the planet Earth with six billion people? Is there ever a day where they go, no, nothing? But, but I'm just saying, the news is- uh, how, what, what is it, about half an hour long? That's <laughs> There's news channels what, that are 24 yeah. hours. But yeah, you're thinking of one specific news program that's on in your house. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's half an hour. How much of that- No, well, no, hour? no! You look again! You, again, you don't- you, I've told you that not all news programs are half an hour by definition, but you go anyway, it's half an hour. Again, you didn't listen to me. Why do you think all news programs are half an hour? They're not. I'm just saying- uh, how much of that do we actually need to know about? But we don't need to know about 
any news. Right? I mean, a- outside sort of dangerous situation. It's interesting. It's, it's entertainment. People want to be aware. People want to be hooked up. I mean, I, I don't, um, uh, you know, watch the news much or read papers. But it's funny when I'm away. I do. I suppose it's because you want to feel connected with with what's yours. It's that feeling of being part of society, isn't it? No, but there's there's places, say like there's places where they don't have telly, right? And they're not watching the news. They're still getting on with life. Yes, they are. And yeah. they're bogged down with their own problems, which is the way it should be. Say like at the moment, I've got a leak in the bathroom. Right? Have you? It's doing me head in. <laughs> so I, I put the telly on to get away from all that. Then you put the news on. They go, oh, there's a you know bad weather in what's it? You go, oh, don't tell me that as well. I like it when you hear about inventions that are coming out or, you know, uh, stuff they're doing in science. But you uh, but you told me the other day that you thought everything that needs to be invented has been invented. Something they said in 1900. But, uh, so what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, they are sort of playing around now. Like, they've, they've said they've made, uh, like a, a heart now that can be bunged into a body if yours isn't working, and keep you going. But why is a- why is a heart that you can bung into someone to save their life, why is that a bad thing? Just because it's another thing, isn't it? That's- we're meant to die from- from the year dot. Uh, things <laughs> live, you have your bit, you knock about, and then you die. If you're gonna <laughs> live forever, how do you plan stuff? Right? That's the way I look at it. Sure. You sort of go- How big would your diary well, be? Well that diary well, this, would become intimidating, is, wouldn't this it? This is what <laughs> I'm saying. You have to fill that in for the rest of and eternity. You, and you get bored. You get bored with living forever. And, you know- But I agree with you. You get bored of people. You'd have to keep making new mates, wouldn't you? Because you'd have discussed everything by the time you're about 110. <laughs> <laughs> 110?! <laughs> so, it's kind of like- Carl, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about 10, I think. I look at life like a- like a Box big book. Chocolates? Like a big book. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Right? And, you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, been enjoying it, I've had enough. Um, Give us another book. No, 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 no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head <laughs> when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life, uh, I'm gonna live to 74, 75, okay, right? Okay, right. So yeah, I'm probably on page, what am I on? A, a book that's got about 200... <laughs> this is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Come on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on, I say if my book's got, uh 300 pages in it. <laughs> yeah. If you, <laughs> few pictures and that. Um, <laughs> it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's life. I, it's, it's a like, book for children. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pop-up book. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, every page he pops in it, he goes, <laughs> all right. All right. I'm probably on like page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna die at 74! Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if if the book was too thick, right, and there was loads more pages Let me tell left, you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. If the book was m- more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> Okay, but no, let him finish the analogy! But he must have known that when he saw the book! You do- We've got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're gonna be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books, <laughs> they're painting pictures more at the beginning, you're going, this is good, and then it, it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? Okay, well that works, so you're saying that you were you no, were young- No, it doesn't work, because well, no, you just well, accepted no. that that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that, because he's sort of- he's actually saying that, you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him, he couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's- he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realises that the world hasn't got a, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, yeah. but I, at uh, long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the, uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio, God. you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, 
God almighty. Imagine, were you like, uh, Paul the party animal partner? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh. What did you get up to? Well, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time I had diarrhea. <laughs> so that's, uh, <laughs> that's the, that was a hell of a, that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah. Yeah, I did, uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV. Oh, And right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually, I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel, I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. <laughs> and, uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, was, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but they look really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes it's in, you've got to queue up. Mm. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on. The noises and stuff in there. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And, um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could, I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my, in my bag, in my hold all, just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly, everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank, get yeah. out of my way! Yeah. Saying, you know, just really, you know, with your, with your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who could have even passed you, oh, you just, oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time, got into the, and it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But then that was, that was not anything compared with the first couple of days, because the first day I was, I went for a walk, and of course Ipanema Beach is famous, I mean obviously the girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's, Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary, I mean the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry, <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm on the beach, because I, I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, we in the in Just the sea. Just think of him! I'm in the beach, right, with diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are- And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, as I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I, and I was shopping, and I, so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel. So I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and, and just swim. I see him straining, just like a cat in well, a litter tray. You see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I so no, I don't think I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let don't piss <laughs> in the what swimming. Sea. Yeah, well, fine, yeah. Fine, okay. Right, fish, so, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to, trying to urinate, and I, so I kneeled, because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> So, but luckily my, my back was to everyone, so no one saw. So, um, so I, so I- I can't I think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. But, I mean, I imagine this in proportion to the rest well, of it, is it? I no? wish. Um, this, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And, uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's gonna happen. So one minute they're calm and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me and lifts me up and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea. 
because I didn't want, I didn't want to lose her. Oh god! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but why? With I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving to my <laughs> friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man <laughs> waving with his cock out. And, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running, would you have come running in and helped me? Not with your knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I'd have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I just, I, there's no way I'd have, I, no, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off in your knob out. <laughs> when, if I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go, you'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off, there was no way I was I gonna- I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. Chimpanzee, that is running it down again. <laughs> yeah, this is where we read extracts from Kyle's diary. Um, we've had to wrestle it from him. He's never happy, but you know that's the way it goes when you're doing a, what, you know a show as popular as this. And I'm going straight now to this entry. My man phoned and said that my auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want a back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat and it What do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, 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 on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, no it's out? good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying are you stressed out. At no point did I say are you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it! Because it, every this. time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> yeah, instantly. You, yeah, he'd probably seen you in the sea and thought, <laughs> well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is- And as it for, uh, and, and, and if you're gonna criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, cos he's just sat there like- And then it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same fucking <laughs> thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then, on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's- it- it's, it's it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizard. <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> why why have we got to see something that that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because n normally pictures are like, you know, you on, in Brazil sat in the sea or whatever. You go, oh yeah, I remember that day, it was a good day or whatever. But- it wasn't. It's just kind of like, <laughs> why have you got to see something it, you might as well. Well, you just, you just ask, listen, why have you got to see something that small? So, why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what, what <laughs> I mean is, why, at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's because- it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show the baby. They're they excited about it. They All sit right, down and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying, it was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh god. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> but hummus? What, what, when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the- there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper- that's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work, we shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I looked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do then? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone. But, but they sort of do, they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any, get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not, not everything, though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're, 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 they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the, it's, it's 97% water or something. Yeah. So, how much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water! <laughs> oh, God. The rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck. Now, we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before. The she's a bent neck? Character. What's this? Incredible. She's, um, she's really old. And she's got a bent neck, yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but her head sort of <laughs> comes out of here. The, it's radio. We can't. They can't see what it you're sort doing. It comes out of a of a chest. So from behind, it looks like she hasn't got an head. <laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old, and I don't know what's happened. Just Suzanne said it's sad, and her bones have sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger on her head. And you know, I, I don't know. It's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just she she's wandering up and down the street. Always looks fed up, but you can see her. You have to sort of bend down a little bit. Mm. But. Our head's just- I thought- I thought I'd told you about She finds a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yeah. Well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> I was going to treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a programme on about Two-Headed Kid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what Two-Headed Kid? It's just a Two-Headed Kid knocking about. <laughs> and I just, just <laughs> wanted to watch that. 
<laughs> what would you mean, a two-headed kid? It was something on, it was something on the telly, I only saw the beginning of it, I thought, oh, it seems a bit heavy, this. The programme about the kid with two heads was a bit sad. They never go into the good sides of these stories. I asked Suzanne what happens if they sit an exam. She said she didn't know. So, Rockbusters, you gave out three clues last week. Have we got a winner? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, this was the first person to email in, but you pointed something out, didn't you? That we're gonna do it this week, the first person, but we think maybe it shouldn't be the first person because some people are up in the world when this comes up and some people aren't up in the world. So, uh, um, we're just gonna pick one at random next yeah. week. So you've got the whole week, but we're gonna pick one at random. But this one is, this is the first one we got with all the right well, answers, we promised. the first one with the right answers, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, well, give us the clues and the answers. All right, so last week's, uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I'll give you an initial of a artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it in, you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Um, first one was, uh, well, I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. Be Beyonce. Like, yeah. it's like a cryptic thing, you got that? Mm. Second one. I stand. Beyonce. Um, Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. Uh, the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Britney. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known I don't more know as, she more is, as, but fine. More as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I realised mm. that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. That's what you're up against. Just like that, Ollie wants to be a millionaire. The last yeah. one was, uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was, uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher. Yeah. He's working out and that, yeah. but he's got a speech impediment. So yeah, when yeah. it when it like comes to like, well, no, you didn't you didn't say all this in the clues. So. But no, well, but, well, but no. it was it was just that that one was Can Kanye West, right? Kanye so, West. So I'm just saying. Why like, would you know, the fitness teacher say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been he's been working him out. They built up a sweat and he's like, right. Well, no, you didn't say all that, so it doesn't matter. But, anyway, but even even if that is the case, so what is he saying? He's, he's saying, all right, can we can we rest now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of, because they say that at the end, it's like, right, everybody- So he's got a speech impediment, he's very, very camp, and he's adding words. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so- That is um, bollocks, you're an idiot. So that was, uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh, it was Gwimlin Howe Jones. Right, let me have a look at that name. There's no such name as Gwimlin. <laughs> what is Gwimlin? <laughs> is it something from Lord of the Rings? Gwillem Hugh Jones. Okay, and, uh, uh, a signed photo. Of, uh, um, us is on the way yeah. to him. Lucky if, you. I don't know why he wants that, but, uh, well done, he got the clue. I don't know if that's a good thing or not to get the clues, but there it is. Well, there you go. So, so, so are we gonna do some clues for next week? Yeah, right. Again, same sort of system. Uh, three of them email in and we'll pick one at random. Right, first one, uh, the initials RP. Right. Right. And, uh, the cryptic clue, uh, not cryptic, well. Steel. That woman's flower, <laughs> right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna like nick a. Well, no, it's different now. What well, is it? If it's a good no, clue, let, let him finish it. Okay, what is the flower. clue? What is the clue and stick to it? Steal that woman's flower. Fine. Okay. RP. Right. Okay. Right. Second one, B. Is, is that the clue or the initial? B is the initial, right? And uh, cryptic clue. Um, keep keep whacking the cooker with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? It's a band or an artist. They kept whacking, you know, kept whacking the cooker with some sort what, of What is it? Keep stick. or kept? What's it? it may, uh, if it's cryptic clear, everything matters, so. It, it, well, it doesn't really. Just, well. just think about whacking, whacking. Well, no, no, give us the clue again. Just, okay. Just the, whack the cooker. No, with no, what some is the clue? Do the clue. Okay, do the clue. This is the clue, keep, and the only. Right. Uh, but no, no, wait, wait, wait. The initial is B, and the clue is. Keep wha whacking the cooker with a stick. Right, fine. But, but it doesn't have to be a stick, though. It well, could no, be like no, an no. Iron. <laughs> <laughs> It could be a, any sort of... Well, okay then, let's do the clue again then. Okay, so the initials B, what's the clue? Keep whacking the cooker. Fine. The last one, uh, the initial M, and then the clue is, uh, Venice, it's, it's all water, isn't it, right? 
how would you describe it, right, when- Oh, Jesus Christ, is this the one- <laughs> Let him finish the clue! I wanna go home, I haven't slept, I've just come back from Rio! He might never finish the clue! It keeps going- Oh, it's full of water, right? Oh, well, you don't need a stick, do you? Use your hand if you want. Well, no, it's B. No, 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 I mean, he might never finish. Right. Not if you're gonna interrupt him. What's the initial? M. What's the clue? Venice. It's all water. There's hardly any land, so how would you describe it? Okay. I think that sort of works. M. M is the <laughs> artist or a band. Email in, uh, podcast at rickygervais.com and we'll pick one at random. <sighs> Win some stuff. Well, that's the end of, uh, episode two in this, uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais Show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Oi! And... Sorry, I just, I just want to explain why that, that's a greeting in, uh, in, in Brazil. Is it? You see someone, hey! Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't just a meeting. Why was your knob out when you're shouting at waving yeah, at me? Yeah, that's why I didn't let you see what was going on. I'm Carl Pilkington. Alright. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this programme. Hello, welcome to the third in this, uh, new series of The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. We've had loads of emails, uh, thank you for those. Sorry we can't reply to them all personally, but, uh, keep them coming, some interesting ones. There's one in particular here, uh, from a guy who says, I see there is less swearing now you're charging for the podcast. Dumbing down already, question mark. Yeah. Well, Interesting. I don't know how that's dumbing down. Well, no, no, not swearing. Oh, that's interesting. Not swearing is dumbing down. And also, the fact that he's complaining that we're not swearing enough. <laughs> yeah. What sort of a cunt would bother writing that email? I don't know, mate. I don't know. But I know he's just some kind of fucking cocksucker. What have you got, Annie? Well, um, now, of course, a couple of weeks back, you gave the rather long-winded but fascinating, um, sort of brain teaser, conundrum, philosophical question about the, uh, heaven and hell doors. I know. And there's been a number of responses to that. I know, that. I know, Explain I know. Explain your error. Well, I got it, I know, I realised as soon as we put it out there that I, I should have said, uh, assume no prior knowledge. Otherwise, you can just say, hold up a cat and say, is this a dog? Or you can say, what's my name? But they don't know anything about you, that's the thing, they only know about their selves, and I should have said that. Yeah. You so know, are you willing to just now say that you've embarrassed yourself? Oh, I've embarrassed myself, I should have said, yeah. yeah, it's gotta be about, it's only about the, uh, you can ask questions. Well, do you know what, it's a bigger man than many that can admit that mistake. Or, a man that's banged to rights and obviously caught out <laughs> yeah, and has exactly. no choice. <laughs> well, it's quite interesting to, to wade through the emails and find out uh, the kind of people that are listening, get a sense of the different listeners, and, uh, I know you, Rick, have met some of the big celebrity names that have listened to the show, and it's yeah. sort of because you've actually met them, mm. um, but it's, now we've got celebrities who are just emailing themselves, e emailing in, just letting us know. This one is from a guy called Aaron, he says, my name's Aaron Douglas and I play Chief Tyrol on TV's Battlestar Galactica. Oh, right. And he listens to the show in his trailer. Now, I don't watch Battlestar Galactica, I hear it's very good, yeah, but it's I, nice I, to I, know I that- I, I don't watch it, I, I don't watch any of those things, but, uh, uh, that's, uh, But, I, but uh, I'm nice, it's nice that the Chief Tyrol, and for those of you that, that, that watch Battlestar Galactic, I'm sure that means something. But it's uh, nice that he got in touch, but I'm just thinking, who would you, in an ideal world, Rick, who would be your ideal listener, a celebrity listener? Um, well, I'm, it's not so much celebrities for me, I like the idea that uh, captains of industry or, or scientists or people actually doing something worthwhile are listening, that's what excites me, because they hear, you know, we've had a couple of emails from people who are doing, um, you know, PhDs and, and, uh, psychologists and that, and that, and that excites me more that these academics are listening. Or so, or, uh, I mean, who's the weirdest person you think that, who's got, who should have more time on their hands, you know, um, uh, uh you know, Stephen Hawking. Imagine Stephen Hawking <laughs> listening yeah. to this show. You know, he's putting together the, you know, the formulation for uh, the, the universe, but he's gonna listen to a little bit of monkey news from Carl Pilkington. Imagine uh, Stephen Hawking emailing us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I mean, that would just blow our minds, wouldn't it? I was, that he's I was, got time to do that. That he's got the inclination to bother doing that. He's, al he's always online, though, isn't he? He's always hooked up. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> well, he's always got that little computer on. Why not? Sure, that's one of the perks. You can just bung an email out whenever. 
I'm not having a go. I just mean uh, that's that's what I'm thinking. He's sat there with his little computer. I, 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 out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, I'd probably like to have a chat with him about space and that because I can't get my head around it. Carl, what? you can't get your head around frozen foods. What a chance are you can have with the universe. No, but just putting stuff out there. The, you know, I mean, it freaks me out when I'm when I'm lying there in bed at night huh. and I think about how this world. On, on Friday, right, I was in I was in bed, with Suzanne, and I said, "Could the world fall?" Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like something from Chicken Licking. Wow, I that's mean, a hell of a bit of pillow talk, that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't foreplay hell? <laughs> oh God! But but I'd like to sort of have a chat with him because I reckon he could put it in a way that I could understand it. Oh, I wish an Inuit was listening. Did I not tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said. Uh, I think, well, I don't think he lives, he lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologies for, if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit? Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I'm so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think if those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't <laughs> That are also Inuit, Inuit yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet someone there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. You know? Skinning stuff. <laughs> Skinning stuff, yeah. What else stuff to skin? Uh, you know, seals. Seals. Yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why are seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before. Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a dog, <laughs> isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to I dog. It. Maybe we what do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined and it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other, why not have like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. I don't know what- This I, is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's he doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's he doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. That that bloke, the Eskimo who emailed in, Inuit. would he would he be in a igloo thing? Probably not. No. Well, no, not. I mean, I don't think many igloos have got internet capabilities. I don't know. I don't want to slag them off. But why aren't we saving them? Why aren't we? <laughs> Maybe those sort of... When you build it, leave a little hole. Yeah. That's where the. But yeah. those kind of igloo internet cafes. They yeah, they go there. Them. They all go to one <laughs> igloo. Yeah. yeah. But why? Why are they being left alone to live like that when it isn't great? What? Well, we're always eager to help everyone in the world, aren't we? We're always like going, oh, look, them people are fed up. Let's build the city up for them. Give them a, you know coffee shop and all the rest of it. Mm. They're mm. being left alone. For them. They're being left alone in, in igloos and stuff. Yeah. Why isn't anyone saying But they're not asking for help. They're happy. Well they're not necessarily happy, but they they that's the way they live, that's where they choose to live. But why hasn't anyone just gone over and gone, Do you know what, we can make it a bit better for you? Well they have. I've never had a leaflet through the door saying help an Eskimo out or, you know, clothing for Eskimos. There's the most remote people in the world eventually Someone gets them some whiskey and fags, and that's the end of them as a culture. It happens all around the world. There can be this idyllic, idyllic world where there's no stress, and soon they're they're watching come dancing on telly, knocking back some <laughs> whiskey and smoking forty fags but, a day. But they're not moving. Surely are dancing they? on ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but what what I mean is like Oxfam collects clothes for people in Africa where it's warm. Probably don't need a jacket. Nothing for Eskimos where it's it's freezing. Where they'd be quite happy to get a jumper in the post. Right, okay. So what are you suggesting? To Africa we send, what, parasols and Bikinis. sun cream. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Right. Guns Traven or something. Oh, right, yeah. Um, he's, he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the way, you know, he cuts stuff up, shows you how the body works and that. Sure. Um. And have you learned anything from that? Um, well, I don't, is he, is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that he's always, I mean, I could cut a body up, I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, <laughs> is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. Well, well, he's, he sort of, uh, sort of cuts bodies up on the telly and, uh, sort of goes, is, is how, like, intestines work or whatever. All right. And he just, uh, he holds them up, fills them with food. Um, and he goes, look, they go fatter. And, uh, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was, like, miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just have a, just have a straight, you know no, what I mean, straight it's to, down. it's to increase the surface area for absorption. So, a foot long intestine, you wouldn't absorb much food. Whereas, you go down, you know. Yeah, but just have more points in it where it has to go through some sort of filter. What are you talking about? Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us, it really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. In yeah, your mind, you some kind of what, some kind of kaplunk style No, but what, what, what I mean is, that's probably that long, because years ago, they were eating dinosaur. And that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat. And it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating, like, yoghurt. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> we, we don't we don't need anything that, you know, is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how... how <laughs> She's got teeth, but she don't need them. No, but that's well, how we're intestines removed, then. Well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. That's our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet, um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they no, what, what, like, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and... No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another... They don't... Doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, sign you're this. paying. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it is annoying. What do you think these doctors sit around doing, playing Mr. Potato? Or what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? being a twin, because it's like... Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, would, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, uh, to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of, there's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprised me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his, his, his tackle, right? Mm-hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um... So he was at the doctors and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, 
got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? <laughs> the patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. No, I still think it's there with like a little knuckle and a, and you know, fingernail, fingernail and that. Well, I'm, I assure you it isn't. They've probably used the finger as a basis to then build up some sort of, uh, uh knob based no, cause it, organ. If, if you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger for- Well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your- your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft, uh, t t near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But, that's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. In surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah, use- well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I, I saw some bloke the other day in a meeting, and on his desk, he had a picture <sighs> of of his kids who were twins, right? And uh, they did, they looked alike, and he did that thing of dressing them the same, that, that sort of thing, that sort of, you know, annoys me, right? Um, and I sort of said, you know, you've only got a small desk, just have a picture of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like I was mental. That's weird, amazing. It? It's not. It's, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's sort of common you sense. You know what you've come up with there? No solution to anything. <laughs> That's what you've come up with there. What? You've come up with the best no solution I've ever heard yeah. in my life. Or it's solutions to problems that don't exist. <laughs> no, yeah. because more room on the desk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's no solution to a problem that didn't exist in the first place. Well done. There was a picture on the, when I was on the, the plane coming back from here, there was a picture of this new luxury hotel. It'll be, I think, $10,000 a night to stay there. It looked extraordinary. It was a hotel and the best rooms were built under the water, under the sea. Wow. So it was an amazing, the best hotel we've ever seen, mm -hmm. but surrounded on all sides by glass and out of it you could see the sea, the sharks, the fish. Mm, I don't think I'd like that. No? But that, again, that's just one yeah. of the hotels where it's, where it's over the top for over the top sake, isn't it? Like where they have twelve yeah. course meals. Well, just have two, but make them bigger, rather than dragging it out and get there's a, there's there's the first course. You know, a couple of you know snails. Yeah, it's just uh, for me all that is. Don't eat a snail. Don't have one snail. Have one. Eat one big tortoise. <laughs> If you want slow food, don't have loads of little snails. Yeah, there's a giant tortoise. Duck into that. Feeds ten. But, 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 but it's what you were saying before. When you start having to take a risk with food, like the fish that can kill you mm. if you eat it, don't bother. Uh, there's apparently a delicacy in Japan, again, someone could verify this, where they eat a live little octopus. And it can stick to your throat, because it's obviously fighting for its life. I mean, good, again. You don't need to eat a live octopus. What are you thinking? How uh, cruel is that? Well, how fresh do you need your food? <laughs> it's just not, it's not, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, re I always remember this story when I was a kid about, um, some bloke who, uh, a bit, bit sad, the story, but weird. He had, um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, uh, carry on with your life, right? It's not gonna be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, uh, you know, plenty of vitamins and stuff, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that. Anyway, he was, he was fed up because he loved his meat. Um, and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. All he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of like steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant. Cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> He's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out from <laughs> his throat. <laughs> what? No, he's some. I know he sounds really weird, but he's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was. It was <laughs> what? It was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical. Uh, knowledge is from is uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal 
It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there, so it's actually sitting there and saying, well, I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my thigh, I'd go, <coughs> there you go, rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, he choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him the meat after all. Just That's a bollock you, story. It's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you, if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're, they're all over the plate. Yeah. And you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. <laughs> the other thing that I was told when I was younger about medical stuff and that, um... Who's telling you this stuff? My mum. My mum told me about it. Jeez. Cause she always says to me, Dad, that, cause he has too much meat and she's always like, you know... Remember the, the, the... Father with the and he goes, yeah, the oh, troll in his throat. throat. But, um, <laughs> my gran, uh, she had something, uh, wrong with her eyes. And they sort of took them out <laughs> and they were just dangling on her cheek and she could still see through them. They were operating on her. Well, yeah, you would have, yeah. They sort of say- No, 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 she wouldn't have been conscious though. No, they were then. Oh, it's yeah. something to do with the eyes and it, it's like- if No. You, no, it's no good operating on eyes if your eyes are asleep. What do you mean, your eyes are asleep? It's like a heart, isn't it? You want to keep them awake. No, so you, keep what do you mean open. you want to keep them awake? What, heart surgery is blokes awake? Stop talking shit no, what, all your life. What I mean is they don't stop the heart. They, they, they of course they don't stop your heart because it kills you. Yeah, I know. So what I mean is it's like the eyes. They wanted to make sure they were working. So the, the only way to do it is keep her awake. No, it's not because you don't know whether they're working or not. You can't see what she sees. What do you think? It, it, you, you can plug something in and see what people are thinking. It was something like no, that. No, no, it wasn't something like that. Well, she could see. She no, said she it was couldn't. really weird. How like, you know, you can see. She could see her knees. <laughs> 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 that is bollocks. Oh, Jim Barty, that is only gone and written it down, the little... That's the jingle for Carl's Diary, uh, excerpts of which we read each week. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio 3 competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, okie dokie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right <laughs> leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. No, we're but, not sure if we should. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> Conga! <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. <laughs> Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> We are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the- t who cares about that? A, t you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all, it had been raining really heavily and that, and it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here? What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, oh, come, come round and see us. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army but was turned away and that's the closest thing you can sort of... How is that like similar the, to living oh, in exactly the army? Oh, that's exactly like the army, yeah, yeah, where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. He's happy, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's yeah. he got down there? Just, just stuff, just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He that's dug, he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school, they knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could <laughs> lean on the wall. Yeah, some And your would go through it and stuff. And um, they knocked it all down, and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me. Whether the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to that's <laughs> you spent to far too long with him. If that now you're just happy to accept, I totally accept that. I- I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. 
His dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole is not, is not that bizarre. Alright, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea cause shark attacks are up. Yeah. Probably four a year now. <laughs> we, well he just says here, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? Just cause there isn't now is there? We've got loads of land. So just, you know, one or the other. We walked out of the sea. Now, this is what I mean about going backwards. Getting back in it again. <laughs> We came from the sea originally, now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the rules! The rules! According <laughs> the to Carl Pilkington! The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God! Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the Pig Woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> that made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just... The pig-headed woman. That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig-headed women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square? I.e., go down there and see the pig woman, it's in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there, though, and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feet. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, I, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do Do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during, during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink, um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They drink 100%, they drink ethanol. You know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees, get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bounces. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling round his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh, let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because well, they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, it's a surprise that they can fly, 
okay? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me <laughs> not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody's saying no, it's to it's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Well, it's that time, isn't it? What? Rockbusters. Ah, oh, yes, the time that no one looks forward to. Uh, Chimpanzee that, Rockbusters. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, uh, gave you three clues last week, three cryptic clues. Mm. Um, some initials of a band or an artist you emailed in. Mm. Uh, what Rob, again? Rob Harding got it, right? Oh, nice work, Rob. So, well done. Mm. Um, the three clues, you, the first one was, uh, RP for the initials, uh, and the clue was steal that woman's flower, right? Yeah. So that was a cryptic clue. The answer today is, is Rob Erplant. Rob er, Rob, Rob Erplant. Rob, Rob Erplant. I don't know who that is though, Rob, is there, there's Rob, no Rob, artist called Robert that's, Plant. That's like Robert Plant. Robert, Robert, Robert no, no, Robert, Robert Plant yeah, is his name. Yeah, but you don't say that, you just go, oh yeah, I'm into it. Well, you do uh, say it. You have do, you got the, uh, <laughs> no, it means like... Have you got the like, Robert Plant? Yeah, Ro yeah, Robert, no Robert Plant. They wouldn't, they wouldn't go, what? <laughs> I the, don't know who, ru I Robert don't know who, Plant. are you saying rubber plant? Uh, the second one- What are you one, saying there, Carl, though? The second one was, uh- It doesn't work. The initial was B, and then that was keep whacking the cooker with a stick, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't have to be a stick, we pointed that out, just keep whacking the cooker. Keep whacking yeah. the cooker, yeah. Uh, that was B, that was B oven. Beat oven. Yeah. I don't know who that is either. Is that a group? The <laughs> beat oven? Is that the Beatles? <laughs> Who's the beat ovens? Classical sort of stuff. Beat oven. Beat oven. Uh, no, you said, you said beat again. Again, they got it's it. Bait. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just saying, though. They, no, they no, got no, it. no, it's oh, bollocks. Rob because, Harding got it. No, no, no. Beat oven yeah. is not Beethoven. You got it. Do you understand? The last one, the initial was M, right? I, uh, I, I just want to know who Robber Plant is. Don't, don't be worrying about Robber. No. Because it's not uh, a name. I've it, it's not the one in Le Zeppelin, is he? So M was the initial. The clue was Venice. It's it's all water, isn't it? How would you describe it? There's, there's hardly any land, right? Oh, so canal. if there's hardly any land. Right, it's more water. What sort of water would you get? Right, Wet. and then then what? Wetville. Tapville. Wetville. No, but just like water that in Venice. What sort of water is it? It's sort of muddy. Right? Um, no, no. Muddy waters. No, but how would you describe Venice? What's the what's the um? If there's more. But what's the what's the uh, initial again? M. If there's M. more, if there's more muddy waters. If there's more sea than land, mm, what would you say? Would you say? Would you probably say there's. Th Sort of mo more of it is C, isn't it? More, more, more is C. C. More is C. More is C. More is C. More is C. So that's, that's the answer. I don't Morrissey. know who is. is that. Morrissey. Oh, Morrissey. Morrissey. So well done to uh <laughs> That's the worst one you've ever done. Well it's ridiculous. Done to, well, that's really the worst ridiculous. you've ever done. It's ridiculous. Well, More is C. Right, if they if they if they're that mm. shit, don't do it anymore. So well done to uh Robert Hardin. he's in he's in <laughs> London. <laughs> Right, this week's there's another three. Oh so, God, uh, we haven't even come to this week's. I forgot. Oh, there. Fuck, this is this is the uh, this is the last time we do this. Monkey News back next week. Oh. No. Yeah, well, this is shit. This is pathetic. Really, it, it's making you look a bigger moron than you are. More is C. No, Robert Plant. They don't fucking work. Let's they, do Monkey they're News. Them right. They're getting them right though. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Bit of shit. Right. Uh, the first one. The initials N D. Right. N D. Who is it? You sing songs on that. Right. N D. Uh, the clue, that Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. <laughs> so you've got to sort of imagine, oh, why is it a Jamaican fella? Yeah. Right? That Jamaican fella doesn't want anything. N-D. Second one, the initial is E. I ask him to pass me the ball by using the red. Right? It's a band or an artist again. I ask him to pass me the ball by using the red. And the last one, T-R, the initials, T-R, He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. What I forgot? What? He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. So what? What I forgot? And what's the T R T R for the uh, for the initials? Right? Email in podcast at rickygervais dot com. We just pick a winner, send you some stuff. That's Rockbusters. Right? Well, that's uh, end of another half hour of. Could I just say this? Absolute. Drivel. Yeah, I, I mean, think. really more than ever. I mean, 
I mean, can I be honest with you now, Rick? I'm embarrassed to put my name to this week's show because the amount of twaddle there's been. It's spoken. my name on it, which is the embarrassing. Yeah. But you know, let, let's let's take the the village idiot uh, that is Carl Pilkerton. It's his fault because I realised not only he's got an head like an orange, he's got a fucking IQ of an orange. <laughs> <laughs> so it's goodbye from me. I'm not saying my name. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Don't make, well, why are you mentioning well, okay. my name? Don't mention but my name. But mostly goodbye from Carl Pilkerton. Mainly his fault. Welcome to number four, season two, the Ricky Gervais show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. Right now, there's a lot of talk, Carl, that I bully you. Okay, you know it's for your own good. I'm trying to train you, aren't I? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, and no disrespect, okay, you are a, what I would call a stupid idiot. Well, can I just ask, because I've, there's been an awful lot of emails that have said, will you and Steve please, uh, stop calling Carl stupid? Now, right. they say, oh, he doesn't just, just, doesn't justify calling him stupid. Now, I don't know what part of injecting a 76-year-old woman in the head so that she lives her life backwards well, couldn't be considered stupid. Okay, then listen, right, I'm gonna, I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these, okay? Now, these are facts that I've sourced, mm. okay? What's the, what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal some facts. Some of them. I don't, mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. Sometimes you sort of just think, what are they doing here? What, what are they offering anyone? Right. See, I'm worried that these facts will annoy you now, but they're meant to fascinate you and, okay. No, I, I think anything's good as long as it gets you thinking. It doesn't matter what opinion you have of something. Yeah. But as long as it gets a, a reaction. Okay then, here you right. go. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does if it- does it need that- whereabouts is this? Where's it living? In the rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much- is it- is, uh, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours, it's got the colours that say- it doesn't want to be eaten, it doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't- you don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why- why make it orange? Of course it's gonna stand out and then they'll attack it. And then it'll turn around and bite them and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite, it's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's- I mean, who's gonna eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, suck the blur! You have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends. But why- why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, it, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not gonna lick it. It's not- it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't- I will not be licking a frog. So it's- it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point am I gonna lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're like they're getting away with something. He doesn't. He doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He doesn't. He doesn't want them. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that say lions have been working out in a gym. It means, you the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool, and the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. Yeah, if it's here, it worked. I'll try and explain to you. The other day, a slug is as evolved as us. 
It's not though, is it? It is. It's you not. think evolution is aiming towards Miles being away human? From where we are. What? It's nowhere near what we're here like. But but you're looking at it in terms of like th this evolution has a will. It doesn't have a will. It's chosen or it's not chosen by nature. A slug uh, got it right. A slug has it got hasn't. it as right as. What do you mean it hasn't? Well, what was it like before it got it right? <laughs> 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 but I think you think, Carl, that, that evolution is moving towards some kind of super being. Perhaps we're like the most advanced so far, but that one day we'll also have wings I agree with and that. superman no, type but powers. No, but something can happen in nature. There could be something like there could be less light. There could be more light. There could be meteor storms. There, there could be a th there could something that happen in nature, right? An external force, which means it it. it the paradigm goes back to naught. So then something that very unlikely would be the last thing to survive. There could, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. I still don't think you've got the concept. It's one of the simplest concepts, it's one of the simplest models. This is why Darwin's a genius. But you think that everything, slugs, cats, are all somehow, they, their, their ambition is to be like us, to be human, or to, to have the but, attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. Only because they don't. Yeah, but only, I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain- Again, Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. I'm He's talking, talking of Planet say like of the Apes. you, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right, and that's all we got left. Uh, it's like this little poodle. <laughs> that was, it was rubbish, right? Right. Um, it's called Fluffy. And, like, my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died, we get left it, my dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it only took about a month, it was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it, we let it out, if he wanted to go out. It got covered in oil, it used to go under the car and everything, so it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle, to just being a bit of a wreck. He got it by a kite, ran sideways, like a crab, <laughs> and all that. <laughs> In the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah. But a dog, dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, jackals it, or, all and I'm wolves. Yeah, but change it, all I'm saying is change it, take away the dog thing, give someone a frog, and they'll still overdo it. They'll be trying to treat it like, if you had a frog, I mean that lizard thing you've got. Salamander. It's, it's still sort of treated as part of the family even though well, it's not. Well it's not. How is it treated as part of the family? Just the way, you know, it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed mm. it a cricket now uh, and again. It, How is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. <laughs> it is in Carl's family. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. Things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now it knows more now than it did when you got it because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. Well, no, it's what do you think it knows? What do you mean it knows more now? They act on instinct. What, 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 what does it learn? It knows when it hears the noise of a plastic case being unwrapped that yeah. a cricket's gonna fall down any second. Yeah, That's well, all it, it knows. Yeah, but it didn't know that in the jungle. So it's already one up. What else has it learned? Well, uh, I, I mean, it's know. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park, <laughs> goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right, I've Pavlov, at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this. And <laughs> <wandered> <laughs> off, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. there. Brilliant. Why didn't you write up his experiments? Because he, he did it a little bit different to that. I, l I love that. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Well, look him up. Educating Carl. That's your next week, right? Let's do another podcast next week. Then they get an extra one free. The people who paid for it, right? Uh, we're going to hear about Sigmund Freud. 
Okay? Hmm. Here's an interesting fact. If the, f the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything. And they'll go to the thing. I, w I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, <laughs> say like say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that lizard, chameleon, whatever, that's that's mainly sticking in in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, that those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, I but I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change the colour of co concrete. Yeah. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information <laughs> for <laughs> chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. Oh god! Stay green. Stay in the woods. <laughs> stay safe. Good night. Oh god! Why are there blind chameleons around? I'm assuming that the blindness has no impact on the the colour change. Presumably, is an automatic. It process. must be. But then that's not going to wander about much anyway, is it? If it's blind, it'll probably stay where it is. So it doesn't need to keep changing. If you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, no. I never do, though. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not- That's got that sort of power, then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give- what would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think you should be killing- I reckon 10. 10 because- You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime, like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think- He doesn't really kill a thousand people. That- that- that stat is about that if you were to boil up a frog, decant of the poison, there would be enough poison to split between a thousand people and kill them. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power- Power? It should be fighting evil? Well, it's not- <laughs> <laughs> It's- it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs>
but with the knob on the head. Now, because there's an infinite number of dimensions, there's another one where you're not doing this. You're you're sat there with a the knob on your head, but you're talking French. Why is this happening? <laughs> there is one, Carl, and I. This is a fact that you're talking French with a knob in your mouth. <laughs> exactly, and no one can make his head or tail of what you're saying. No, because it's 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 pidgin French anyway. <laughs> exactly. But who came up with this? Well, it's because there are phenomenons that happen at the subatomic level that people are explaining as being that, for instance, atoms or very, very small molecules are disappearing and reappearing. And people are saying- <laughs> that's the fact that we're trying to dissect this theory, and you said mm, very, very small molecules. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. <laughs> atoms, neutrons. And is there anything that we look at on this planet that we go, that's weird? But it would fit in normal in another dimension. It's just so I happened. I think you. I think no, but say, say like the elephant man. Yeah. Was he all right? But he was just in the wrong dimension. <laughs> I love this. Well, it's an interesting thought. I mean, of course, there is one dimension that where where you are the ruler of the world, and yeah. everyone thinks you are a genius. Yeah. I hate that though. <laughs> I don't. I just don't understand why we're worrying about this, though. No, nor do I. Well, it's we're not violence. worrying about it. Well, they are because. Scientists and that are sat in a room somewhere going, what's going on? What's what's happening in the other dimension? Uh, but we can't get to it, can we? So well, that's why no, I don't it's worry about it. I, I agree with Carl. It's, it's, it's largely pointless. It's academic. It's it, it, it it's like it's like when you, you a person does um, philosophy and the first lecture he ever goes to, he comes out and uh, he goes in the student union. He goes up to uh, someone who's doing <laughs> English or science and goes, "Oh, well, mate, that table's not there." They go, "What?" Yeah. They go, "The table's not there." He goes, "What? How do you know?" They go, "What? What are you talking about? The table's not there." They go, "Isn't it there? Can you feel that? Is it there or not?" <laughs> and his beret falls off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not a big um, chat up line as well when you've got a little bit of philosophy and you try to spout off. Because of course I told you before, haven't I? When I was doing a school play, and uh, there was a girl and I was trying to crack onto her, but I was going through my sort of you know fifth form phase of sort of reading Catcher in the Rye and all the rest of it, rebelling against the system, and uh, I thought, well, she's gonna she's gonna find me appealing if she realises how smart I am. Mm. So I- Can I just ask you one thing? Yeah. Is this before or after the phase when you thought a bow tie would sort you out? This was before the bow tie phase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a phase, I should say, for new listeners where I, for about six months, wore a bow tie because I thought it made me look sort of like I was from a Jeeves and Worcester book. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very urbane and sophisticated. But, uh, yeah, we were doing the school play and, uh, there was one point where everyone was hanging out in one of the rooms, music <laughs> rooms, tr getting changed, joking, <laughs> laughing, cracking onto each other, right? I was sat in the room next door, empty room, on my own, right? Reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, the, uh, sort of, kind of, you know, populist philosophy book from the 70s. Just sat reading that in the hope that she would, uh, walk in the room see me, think, my God, he's obviously wise, and presumably, you know, get off with me. Um, must have sat there <laughs> for about an hour and a half <laughs> before anyone came in, and, uh, <laughs> she came in eventually, and, uh, I thought, ding dong, this is it. She came in and said, have you seen Martin Wells? <laughs> I said, I think he might be next door. She disappeared again. I gave her another 15 minutes on the hope that she'd come back. She didn't. I went in the next room. She was getting off with Martin Wells. Oh no. Because he'd been dancing. With, he'd been dancing around with no trousers on. <laughs> <laughs> so, all I'll say is, there's a, a less a valuable lesson learned. Um, I think this was the same girl. I was at a party once, and I was just going to try to impress her, and um, someone lit some joysticks. Uh, you're know, just gonna give it a kind of hippie vibe, right? And I didn't know what joysticks were. I thought they were some kind of drug, like <laughs> cannabis. So, so these joysticks are like, and I, and I started, I started going because I thought we were all supposed to be getting high on these joysticks. I started going, whoa, oh man, these joysticks are. They're really doing me in, man. And, and everyone said, what do you mean? I went, oh, they're good stuff. <laughs> this is good shit. And, and, they, and they said, what do you mean, joysticks? They're not, it's not, they're not drugs, they're just, there's an incense. And I went, yeah, I know, I'm just saying they're, they, I'm just saying they smell great, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Martin Wells on the table, <laughs> trousers down, yeah. everyone just throwing in money. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I don't know if it was, I mean, there was another party where I, um, 
I don't think it was the same girl, but there's, inev there's inevitably a girl there that I'm trying to, you know, impress. And I went up to, it was a house party in someone's house, I didn't know anyone there really. I was only Steve, you've come without trousers. <laughs> well, it worked for bloody Martin Wells. <laughs> and I, um, I went up to the toilet and I had to do, you know, number twos. Brilliant. And I did them. There was no toilet paper. <laughs> oh, God. At the party. <laughs> and, and I was like, and yeah. I was scrabbling around in this bathroom thinking, what can I use? There was nothing. And I was thinking, oh God, what can I do? And, um, as I recall, in the end, I, I couldn't make anyone hear. I didn't want to sort of go out in this, into the hall and stuff. So I had to shout out the window into the garden where everyone was. No! Yeah. And someone had to come and bring me some. And, Brilliant. um, once again, it didn't, well, I wish I'd fucking had Zen in the iron because that means <laughs> then I could have ripped some fucking pages out and wiped my arse. Jim Pants is that. He's gone and written it down again. Gone! <laughs> That's the, uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Suzanne said today can be my day because she has been a bit of a pain with her illness and that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said I can do what I want today. We went for a walk around Green Park. Loads of tourists were about looking at the Queen's house. She was in because the flag was up. I wouldn't want to live there. Why wouldn't you want to live there? Just because it's right in the centre of town. It's just not in a good place, is it? It's got a roundabout mm. side and that. Really <laughs> busy. It's pretty good. I went for a pee in the toilets. When I came out, a pigeon had shat on Suzanne's coat. She was in a bit of a mood about it. A bird shat on my ear once. I left it for about 10 to 15 minutes until I got home. I washed it off and in that 10 to 15 minutes it had corroded me ear. You know, he's had a lot of problem with ears. Um, he told me the other day, he, uh, he got up. Um, washed, had a bath, had some breakfast, went to the shops to get a newspaper and well, had a chat with a woman in the corner shop, got home, pottering around, looked in the mirror, he had a cotton bud sticking out of his ear. <laughs> he went, what annoyed me was, she didn't say anything. Like it's her responsibility. Yeah. No, but she knows me well enough to sort of, you know, <laughs> go... You know you got a cotton bud in your ear. No, she knows you well enough to go. Carl's got a cotton bud in his ear. I've seen worse. Uh. When you when you've got a cotton bud in your ear, what interrupted I th I you? I think Suzanne called or my dad called or something, and then because I was running a little bit late because I'd been talking to them, the earbud was in. I just popped my coat on and went to the shop. Carl, you got a toothbrush in your mouth. Oh. Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> that's so true! That's really true! If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the- what- what, what happened to the cat then? It, it- it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh And no. it was just walking around bumping into stuff. The, I mean the vet sort of said, oh we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But- Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it w um, I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> 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 it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. The cat that kept throwing up. So his mum shaved it. Unbelievable. Dry wipe cat. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the- that's not the weird bit. 
if he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The That's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way. This is scientifically possible. What's what? his want- yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them. Unless you're blind. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. Th no, but I mean, most things are based on looks. What I mean is, when you first first like meet someone and that. Well, then initially it's only looks because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's like fact or anything. I'm just thinking, if you're blind, why mess about? You're still basing on it. If it's only looks that yeah. you people find, what? Yeah, I'm just saying. So why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that. Presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just, alright, I mean, maybe that's not, uh, I mean more like- Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just the same way, I think I put how, you know, people, uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman, uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're gonna have a change, have a change. <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject, I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need the telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. <laughs> and if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early, it's Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card, a present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice. Quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once <laughs> in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. Someone has found some people who live in an old town somewhere where they are so old-fashioned they still walk on all fours. There is a picture of them and they use shoes on their hands. That's not old-fashioned. Why is that old-fashioned? That's some kind of regressive evolution. Yeah. Really old-fashioned. Yeah. Well, it's not true, is it? It is true. It's somewhere in, uh... Well, I believe there are- they have found a group of people that are living and walking around on all fours, but yeah, I don't but believe they're wearing shoes on their hands. And I don't believe it's- they haven't evolved <laughs> to standing <laughs> no. up. No, they just haven't seen other people walking on two feet. Don't talk shit all your life. That's all it's about, though, isn't it? You copy. When you're a baby, if you were stuck in a room, You'd wander about on all fours because that's that's the way. That's an easy way of getting about. So you only walk on two feet because you see everyone else doing it. Well, I don't believe that is the case because, as I understand it, some of the family are walking on two feet. So I don't know what the ins and outs of it are. I know there's a forthcoming documentary on the BBC, so maybe we should watch that and then we'll all know what's going on right. instead of just leaping to conclusions because you read half of it on the internet we, and then uh, skipped but, on to but something all else. All I'm saying is though you would wear shoes on your hands if you're roaming about like that. <laughs> So I mean, you just confessed there that you, 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 you leapt from fact to fiction, did you, in the space of I'm, one I'm, diary entry? It's just that I saw a little picture. And you assumed that they'd be wearing shoes on their feet? If they've got shoes on their feet, they might as well have them on their hands, because their hands are doing the same as the feet. 
<laughs> if you're not gonna wear them on your hands, don't put them on your feet then. I'm beginning to think some monkey news was bollocks. <laughs> Uh, treated Suzanne to her tea, went and got her a curry from the shop opposite. While I waited for the food, I read a story in the Metro newspaper about an alien gang oh. that kept appearing in someone's garden. Christ. The bloke moved, but when he used to pass the house at night, he would still see the aliens knocking about, hiding underneath his old shed. There was other alien stuff, but I had to go as the food was ready. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, that. Yeah, load of bollocks again. Well, good. More, um, drivel from Carl's diary next week. Right. Rockbusters. Quick. Right then, so last week gave you some initials, again, of artist or a band. Quick! Cryptic clue and that. Yeah. Um, the first one I gave you, the initials were N.D. Yeah. Uh, that Jamaican fella, uh, he doesn't want anything. Right? So you gotta think about the accent there. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want anything, so, yeah. so, he's not, he's, so, he's not sort of demanding anything. Okay. No, no sort of demand. Nil demand. <laughs> <laughs> Nil demand. So, it's like Neil Diamond. They'd say, Neil Diamond, please. No, Can no. have some Neil Diamond? No. Right. Nil, nil demand. But just now it was all to do with, I've got no demands. Now it's a Jamaican person going in and asking for Neil Diamond in a Jamaican voice. Yeah, I know, but it's a cryptic clue, isn't it? Doesn't work. <laughs> the second one was, uh, the initial was E. Uh, I ask them to pass me the ball by using their head. Uh, what do you do if you chuck someone a ball? They head it back. Head it back, yeah. They, so he they say, head it back. So you'd say, uh, edit, edit to us. Edit, edit us. That's, that's editors. What that's, is it? Is it a it's a band that are No, 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 there's a band called The Editors, but there's no band called Editus. Editus, what's that? Is it great? Is it a Greek band? Again, cryptic. Just, you got no, to think again, cryptic. bollocks. Then the last one, uh, TR with it, it was the initials. Yeah. The cryptic clue. He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. Go what, on. What I forgot? Dunno. Well, sheep. Something to do with sheep. Right, something to do with sheep. They're, they're the woolly ones. Yeah. What are the ones that run and charge at you? Oh, uh, they're woolly as well. No, no, the but rams. Uh, not, not as woolly. The rams, right? Yeah, over there. The, the ram ones, right? If you write that down. No, you can't write it down. It's that's, a, it's that's a... Ramones. The so, ram ones. The ram no, ones. but it's so say it, isn't it? It's not, because it's not. No, no, it sort of changes about a bit, just cryptic. Part of your understanding of the word cryptic is yeah. it can be anything. What am I thinking? Cryptic. Cryptic clues in a crossword have a logic to them, that's why people are able so, to answer them. Well done to Neil Fennan, who's in, uh, in Canada. He's well, like, I just don't know what that says about Neil. Bollocks this. Right, do the next week's one. Right, then. Just get it over with, we've got to stop this. Monkey News is coming back. No, it's not coming back, there's, there's nothing going on, we're not doing it. Right, SC are the initials of the artist of the band. Go on. SC. Uh, the cryptic clue. No, don't, just, stop, just stop saying cryptic, because it's not. The, the clue is, I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and the fella making the food was there each time. Right? SC are the initials. I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday if you want. Uh, the fella making the food, he, he was there each time. What's... So he changed it? Uh, uh, was, he there, was he there Saturday and Sunday or not? He can be if you want, I'm just saying he's there a lot. Oh, this, is, this, is, at, this is like pulling teeth. I'm trying to hurry it up. And the second one, <sighs> go into that woman's store and rip her off, right? Right. That's C. Okay. C. Go into that woman's store and, and rip her off. Okay. You know, if you're gonna do that. Oh, don't mumble <laughs> at the end of it. Go on. Just do the clue. And the last one, the initial E. Last one ever. You have had, had a go at laying down a track. But it ain't perfect, right? So you're sort of making a making a track. No, just do the clue. You're making a track. You what, dude, give us the clue. Down, Don't just talk perfect. around it. Right, the initial is E. E. What's the clue? You have had a go at laying down the track, but it ain't perfect. Fine. A music track. Yeah. Well, no, but no, 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 no. You can't. <laughs> no, there's, they, these people can't ask questions. Well, I can. Oh, oh God. So send them in podcast at rickygervais.com. Right, that's the end of. Uh, Another Ricky Gervais show. Oh, thank God for that. Another one next week. We've got to give value for money, because oh. this is shit. So we've got to, what we do is, because this is such dreadful bollocks, we're giving more of it. Yes. That's <laughs> lucky them. <laughs> yeah. So it's cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Bye. And Carl Pilkington.
Hello, welcome to number five, season two of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Coming up, Carl's gonna teach us all about Sigmund Freud. No, we're not, we're not doing that. Well, no, yes, we, we are, are, because last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look, but, uh, I didn't find him that interesting, so. But well, that's not- But this is, this is what irrelevant. I mean, this is what we were talking about. You, you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn yeah, something. I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that- <sighs> I gave him, I had a look at the website. It, it just oh, oh, SigmundFroyd.com. Yeah, he started that, I just had he? a look, I just I did a search on, like, famous quotes from- Philosophy. Quotes, brilliant. That'll get you everything you need, a quote. That's well, I, don't, it. I don't need to know his history. That sums just... up a man's life work, a quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill will go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund- didn't really have any any sort of catchphrases is what yeah, you mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. sound bites. Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press. <laughs> Brilliant. So you haven't well, bothered to learn about him. Well, you didn't even pick up a book. I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then I was, but I don't know if I am because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> I did look at some of the things that he'd said, and the one Do it now! Do it now! Right, what have you learned about Freud? Okay, here we go. This is Carl Educates Ricky and Steve. Number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember oh. was, like he said, a baby. You, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? It looks well happy. Uh, it has enough. It's full up. Uh, it goes to sleep. It's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> "That's what happens when you're older as well." That's all I remember from all the things that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how like it's, it's like. Now, to be fair, Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you. No, I'm not having a go at Freud. Him, but, you know. I mean, Freud has been discredited on on some issues, and we've moved on with experimental psychology and and. But, but and that's what that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow. So, what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. Um, I don't know. You've, well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's see not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is, is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh, Christ almighty. But, but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by, uh, by his, by his work. So. Unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, He's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. <laughs> not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote, so they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick. Next, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're not, in, we're not in charge of it is what I'm saying. That's nearly it? as good as let's go to the beach. <sighs> Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of well, we're gonna about get some, some quality thinking here. <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. No, he was saying, uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world in it. We're all getting old and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What, what, what we're trying to do. This is what I'm saying about we don't like people to get old. We're always saying, oh, we can change that face, we can lift your chin up, we can put a wig on you. And Why are you so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same. It's just getting old and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's going a bit bald. So it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. Treat the That's world no, like a head. You've actually come up with one there. Um, I thought of another phrase you could you know, just just sitting here talking to you, flogging a dead horse. Yeah. What do you what do you think that means? Flogging a dead horse. 
a number of people are still amazed by your complete lack of understanding some of these famous uh, sayings and phrases. So, well, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's that's like uh, you know, get get a new get a new horse or um, mm. no, he hasn't got it. No one's going to buy it. No, it doesn't mean that sort of flogging. When you're hitting it. Yeah. Right. So what's the point in hitting it? So it's dead anyway. So don't bother hitting it. It's absolutely not feeling it's pointless. Anymore. It's a wa- It just means it just means it's a waste of time. Yeah, but it depends what that horse has done to you. No, it doesn't. No, it does. It's that thing, in it, of like, a, if a bear attacked you mm. and you managed <laughs> to hit it on the head and it went down, you'd go and you'd be annoyed. You still have built up aggression. You give it an extra clout. Extraordinary. I don't know who's compiling this book. Sometimes um, it's worth flogging a dead horse if he did something to you. If he annoyed you, Carl. I've got a couple of little facts for you. Just to try and in- inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yep. So what- wh- how have they found that out? Well, I don't know, but- But I've- I've never heard of any fish having cancer though. I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? Okay. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. What? Because it's it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out, or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with. It, it, I mean, w- what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. Right. It was a uh, just a little bee. She'd been out, um, sunny day and that, uh, got the washing off the washing line, <laughs> she was bringing it in, little bee sat on the top of like the bed sheet or whatever it was, <laughs> and um, she's in the kitchen with it and she goes, look at that, little bee there, she's like sort of stroking its, stroking its head, and it loved it. <laughs> <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well it wasn't, it wasn't struggling, it was just sat there like. Because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the uh, in the heat and that. Mm. And uh, he just stayed there on the sheet, and she sort of strokes his head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It was like you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> that was that was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had Harry the house fly. What? Said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right. It's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. How do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, oh, it's back. Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't harming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, do, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like we're thinking another fly is getting a bit of free rent or something, no, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why, why no? Well, no. I d- right. Okay. You're in a house, right? There's flies. Okay. Not flies. Fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies, at no point was there a crossover period where there's two and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean, it was always just one on its own. And we just <laughs> thought, leave it, it's alright. I don't know why, you, why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I don't know why you assumed when you see a fly every now and again that it's exactly the same fly. It just fact was. That it's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? Well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they'd made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing. Okay, this is this is incredible, Steve. Can I can I take over? Oh, hang on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got. There's a small fly and they've made it a pair of glasses. Yeah. yeah. So that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of 
We, we're looking after everything now, aren't we? Sorry, I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed him you the story. Saw it, you saw it. It was a picture of a, of a house fly with a pair of glasses, glasses on. Yep. Right? It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using, um, microscopy, right, and, uh, um, uh, laser tools had as an exhibition shown that they could make a pair of glasses smaller to fit on a heart. They've put it on there and they've taken a picture of it and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you drawn the, uh, glasses on there. <laughs> 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 and he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> my god, my god, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what do you think of that though? But they well, did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. But no. why would they bother making glasses for it? And they've got a compound eye. They'd have to make about a thousand pairs of glasses for a fly. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? <laughs> When no. you, you know, we are, we're always doing it. <laughs> we're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card, cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> we're always fiddling. Always fiddle about. It's like that bit about, um, uh, what was it? It's th th you see, this is technology going mad and that. Um, they're doing operations on people, right? Um, and instead of inject, sort of injecting you with, uh, stuff that knocks you out. They're gonna hypnotise you, and uh, they, they operate on you when you're hypnotised. But you're still awake, so you sat there awake. Mm. You're aware of what's going on around you, mm. but you can't feel anything because someone's hypnotised you. Why are we messing about with that when there's nothing wrong with the injection? Well, there are. I mean, it's not it's not healthy to constantly give someone very dangerous. Yeah, very but dangerous you've just time. Had, you've just said it yourself there constantly. If, if, if they keep you coming in having stuffed on, on someone, don't be doing multiple operations. But sometimes you need to. Why? Because, because of whatever the complaint it. may be. Yeah, but we, but no, not multiple. Give them one or two max. After two, it's like enough's enough. We've operated on you. We fix that. We fix that. We're not fixing anymore because it's just going to be there's going to be something else wrong with you because you're getting old, like the world. Get on with it. That's that's what I'm saying. Stop sort of ploughing stuff into it. Like I've said before about a car. You know, the gearbox is gone. All right, we'll replace it. Oh, exhaust. Well, all right, we'll put an exhaust on it. Oh, the oil filter. Forget it. <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll be um, the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but, yeah. uh, right. I think this isn't gonna be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick! <laughs> Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with ink? Yeah. They, they can do it, not with ink. With coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I haven't had that verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. I've, I've seen facts like, uh, the Impala's fur is just nearly the same colour as grape juice. <laughs> which, I <laughs> yeah. don't know what that, who's that aimed at. <laughs> I don't know, you know. It, so, uh, well, what I, do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort well, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well? Uh, well no, 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 no. But that's, that's not, not being open-minded. Open open-minded is, is, uh, being open to the facts that, you know, the possibility. Open-minded isn't uh, believing everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it. A lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form. But, a according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But, but we know that's impossible, don't we? 
Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem a with zoo that. A zoo hasn't got- hasn't got 1% of all animal species. No, but they've got more. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite- Yeah, yeah quite but big, exactly, really. but you're- but you're- you're right, you're questioning it. Le, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. But what are you talking about, a zoo? As I said, there's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where you got them from then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he- At that point- Oh no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing in it of how you all pull together in a, in a bad situation. Don't talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh god, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right, so there's spiders talking to flies and- well, they- they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? they what do you mean? They would have been on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions, just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big? It's big. It's big. It's a big boat. Hey, how long- what was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It was a couple of weeks. He probably had, um, the Extreme Makeover Home Edition team. Uh, they- they all chipped in. Probably had Queer Eye for a Straight Guy helping him out with some of the- The, the interior design elements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two <laughs> of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big, because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, then next there, two elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on, but when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you- are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question it's of not what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered, and they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it, they're here now, we're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much, you can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> Chimpanzee, that he's running down again, you fucking. <laughs> so that's the jingle for uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Freaking, I've had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it, for her yeah, birthday? It was you a went birthday to the Cotswolds. Yeah. So I just went for one night. Got the car and headed off. We stopped at a service station to get some breakfast. We had fried toast with an egg on it, one sausage and beans, twice. Cost us thirteen pounds eighty-five. They sell everything separate, so it seems cheap. At that price, we must have been charged for each bean. <laughs> we found the B and B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B and B, so we had a quick walk around the car park <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday! <laughs> the room was now ready. It's an all right room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like a child, like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, no, no! Oh, I'm, 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 I'm. Get off the bed, not on the furniture. <laughs> The room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring at that window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> we'd always have the car park. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. <laughs> we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner and went on another walk. There was a field that was there just for birds to live on. We couldn't see any, so we went to the pub. Headed back to where we were staying for our dinner, I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of thirteen behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. He was only about eleven. He thought he was it. <laughs>
<laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did nout. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> a Ford Sloth. Yeah. I would love that ad campaign. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, God. The new Vauxhall Slug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> So, Su Suzanne's had it every time so far. She's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready, she's seen the car park, an empty field, and now let's go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that every time you go away? I like nothing. the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. Did she just look? Like, she went to a club, had a whale of a time. No, she just looked out at the car park, just like, memories. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you do though, isn't it, when you go to these places, there's nothing else, unless you want fudge, <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk round the church graveyard and, <laughs> and have a look, like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> Talking, I was just intrigued to know because Rob from Burton on Trent has uh, sent this in, and he wants to know that because he's just started seeing someone, and he wants to know what your advice, Carl, is on how to keep her happy. You know, he's just started a relationship with someone. He wants to know what what your advice would be to keep her happy because, you know, I mean, he won't have heard that you took Suzanne on that wonderful trip to the Cotswolds. So, what's your sort of your advice really for someone who's perhaps just started a relationship? I, don't, I, I mean, you've been with Suzanne for what nine years? Ages. Mm. I don't think you should. Um have to go out of your way to please them because then it's not the right person. Mm. I think you should just do what you want and then if they like it then they're the right ones for you. Mm. So don't don't go out of your way too much. I mean I got the posh badge for a birthday. Mm. Uh, that's once a year. Um, rest of the time it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I like weird stuff. I like watching weird stuff and all that. Um, now and again I won't make her watch it. I'll, I'll tape it. <laughs> Advice. But sometimes, <laughs> this is amazing advice. Sometimes you just say, "No, come on, the bloke with the two heads on. I want to watch it live." Uh, <laughs> so give and take is what you're saying there. That's all. It's, it's, it shouldn't be hard. As soon as it's hard, it's not right. So just uh, just go about your business. So she joins in. Brilliant. Another quote for the book. Woke up to the Commonwealth Games on the radio. Now, what are you making of the Commonwealth Games? Is that something that interests you? Are you a sports fan? Um, I, I'm not really. I mean, Suzanne's, uh, sort of been getting up early, especially to watch it. Um, you know how I feel about a lot of it. Um, it's just seems to be sort of wasted. If people are running fast, use it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than just trying to beat your own record or someone else's, do something where you do have to run. If you're a good swimmer, be a lifeguard. Don't be messing about going up and down. I was swimming recently, I do a lot of swimming, and I've never quite mastered my front crawl. Just never quite nailed the breathing, because it's quite tricky, isn't it? You know, you, you've yeah. really got to breathe at the right moment. And, um, so I'm in the swimming pool in the local gym, and there's a guy bombing up and down, really doing a great forward stroke. So I, uh, waited till he came up, and sort of went, uh, <laughs> excuse me, mate, um, <clears throat> I was just watching you when you were doing your front crawl. I was really impressed. Could you just watch me? When I do mine, and tell me if I'm going wrong. Why would you go to a man? I know, and that was what I. Th that was the problem. Is only as I was saying it did I realise what it sounded like. I've just been watching you yeah. swimming up and down. I was really and, impressed. And you're both in speedos. <laughs> both in speedos. You know, I'm. I'm got the goggles on. Oh, you got a special, uh, special <laughs> orthopedic. No, I know. You know, special um, prescription goggles so that I can see when I'm, when I'm swimming. How so, much um, were they? Quite, oh, quite pricey. But why do you need them? There's nothing in a pool to look at. It's not like you're scuba diving. There's well, nothing. Well, hold just... on. Clearly, there is someone to look at in a pool. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't checking. Well, I was checking him out, but I was checking him out for for swimming tips. 
and he just mm. looked at me when I asked him, can you just watch me and offer me any tips? <laughs> and he just See, looked at me like I was just that's, mental. That is a, such a strange thing to say, can you just watch- I don't know how you had the nerve to do that. Well, I- it was innocently motivated. Well, I know it's innocent, but what a strange thing to go up to someone and- But what with the civilization we live in, where we can just ask our fellow man to help us out with our forward crawl? But we're in a society where we can't. But you know that. It's a strange thing to say. But, I, but sometimes it's nice to just think, no, do you know what? I'm not gonna fall into the trap of I thinking agree. he's immediately gonna think I'm gay or well, that I'm chaining him up. I'm just gonna ask him to do me a favour. There's nothing wrong with that. What if he said, yeah, it's just good, yeah. Um, do you mind coming at me with, um, my plastering? You'd have said, no, I can't. But it's not the same. He's in the swimming pool. He's yeah. there in the pool. He's swimming up and down. He's, you know, yeah. he, it's not no skin off his nose to just offer a bit of kindly advice. If your car's broken down in the, in the middle of nowhere and someone drives by, you know, it's a generous thing to do. Just stop and maybe look under the bonnet and help them out. I agree, but I don't see how it's any different. Yeah. You know, all, and in the end, he did, and all he asked was that I wake him off. <laughs> 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 no, he didn't. I'm joking. <laughs> That's the jingle for Rockbusters, um, a quiz which I don't think anyone enjoys. I mean, Carl doesn't enjoy writing them, we don't enjoy listening to them, the listeners from the emails are just not interested, so don't know why we bother. <laughs> but anyway, right. here we go. Last week's clues, go. Uh, the first one, it's, it's a uh, cryptic clue, just in case no, it's the stop first saying time cryptic, because they're cryptic not cryptic. Clue with initials of an artist or a band. Mm. You work it out, you know, you send in the answers. Mm. Right, the first one, the initials were SC, right? Um, and the cryptic clue was, uh, I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Mm. The fella making the food, he was, he was there each time. Okay. Right? So you gotta think about it, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, just tell us uh, the answer. What is he? He's, he's, not, he, he's a cook, isn't he, if he's making the food yeah. and that. Mm. He was there on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's the, mm. it's the same, same cook. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what have you got there? Same cook. Same cook. Sam cook. Sam you cook. said same cook. Yeah, but if I went, I, I, what, the way I look at it is, if someone went, if I worked in a record shop- The way you shop, look at it is, if it, I you get a close shop, you someone came just in and said, have you got Sam cook? I'd go, yeah, sure, he's in the jazz section or whatever. Right, the second one- Bollocks, that is bollocks, that That's one. Go, in, go into that woman's store and rip her off, right? So what's a store? Shop. Right? If you're ripping someone off, what are you doing? Stealing. Uh, another way of- Conning. Right, okay. And what, what, what is it? It's a shop, it's a woman, so what, what am I saying? What's the initial? C. Con shop. Right. It's, it's a woman. Con her shop. Corn her shop. There Corn you go. Shop. So Steve worked that one out, well done there. Um, the last one. Uh, I'm stunned. You've had a go at laying down a track, but yeah. it ain't perfect. Go on then. Mm. What's that? So a track yeah, is- Yeah, what's the initial? E. Okay. So you've had a go at laying down this track. Yeah. So when you're laying down a track, it's like a, it's a, it's a mix, isn't it? Yeah. You've had a go at doing it. You've just, just, you know, it ain't perfect. Yeah. So you could say it's a, what's another word for not perfect? It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, oh, Shit. Bit of a, like, that's a bit rough, isn't it? It's a bit, a bit of a rough mix. It's your, your rough mix. Your rough mix. Your rough mix. I, I've never heard of that band. <laughs> that's not a band. Annie Lennox, isn't it? Your rough mix. So, uh, Your Candice, rough mix. Candice Morris in, I, in London, uh, got them. I really don't know what to say. So, uh, sign picture off You're to right? her. I, well, I feel embarrassed that we, that we're still doing okay, it. Okay, this, okay. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're jacking it in a bit. Should we just yeah. not, let's, should we just not mention it again like it never happened? Well, let's do monkey news next week. No, we're not doing monkey news. There's nothing going on. In mon I'd be doing it if there was monkey news going on. It's not going on. We can't do it. Rockbusters has to fill the gap. Are we doing this week's? Hurry up. CK. Depressing. Oh god, we got this week's to come. I thought Fuck this was me. over. CK. Fucking hell. Do you know the, uh, the songs that you sing at Christmas? That bloke who sings them is, is brilliant at it. Right? CK. Second one. MG. I told the homosexual man that oh. the grape tree was mine. What? I told the homosexual man that the grape tree was mine. And what's the initials? MG. Right? Okay. Bit of an easy one. And, uh, I ask you, if you believe in Father Christmas, right, what would you say if I asked you? The initial is S. Is that specifically Ricky? Um, we might as well keep it as, as Ricky, yeah. I ask you, if, if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? 
So have they got, is there any prior knowledge? Do they have to guess what I'd say? Well, they'd know, it's obvious what you'd say about it. Oh, this uh, is so bad. So... It's, emb it's an embarrassment, this. Yeah. So it's a little quiz, leave them thinking with that for the, for the next week. Right, what are you gonna learn about next week? Podcast at rickyjuvace.com, just send them in. Embarrassing. Don't bother, if they're shit. Right. Well, that's about it for another week. Um, it's the end of number five, number six next week. Um, keep coming to rickyjuvace.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, that way keep you abreast of things that are going on. We've made a little video, haven't we, Carl? That we might pop up there. And, uh... We've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. where well, you can now get all 12 episodes of the first season uh, on iTunes. And I think that's a, a two or three quid in England or um, five dollars or so, I'm not sure. But you can get those now, all 12. So, uh, for me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. Audible. Hello, welcome to number six, the final episode in this season two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. You can still go and get the archive, all 18 episodes we've done so far. That's available on iTunes and audible.co.uk. Um, and there's a little video diary we've done, a little free podcast. We may go into free podcasting, but in video, Steve. Uh. And there's a little free taster up there. Um, so check that out. Uh, go to wikisarays.com to find out all news and everything. But, come on, let's get on with this episode. We're, we're here and now. This is right, yeah, absolutely, here we are. Good, Carl, go. I've got some bad news to start off with straight away. Um, the world's oldest tortoise. A 250-year-old tortoise died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of, of your life? <laughs> 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 you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You like, like see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know, I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. No, but there's, there's loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's, that's weird, that's, that goes to show that we've been around before, or... No, it doesn't. There's none, that, I have no evidence for that. Of well, reincarnation. I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes? Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close, it's the next, next thing next to flashbacks. It was, um... <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and, uh, my mum had, like, run the bath and that, and, uh, she said, is that, is that too warm? And I said something like, no, it's, it's all right, this, it's a lot better than when I used to have a, have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. And she was like, what? And I said, you know, well, it happened years ago. <laughs> and she was a bit like, oh. And I, I can't remember that now, but she talks about it, and... You know, that just goes to show that, because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. Well, you- I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So- She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just, just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark won and his wooden bath when he was- No, around? I don't want to go there, because that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of- It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, What's, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you no discover? scientific evidence No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't, don't be looking at them, because you you're only going to find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If if you if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a badden, you go oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees, and it's the same. Don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows lives. What you've been up to. Well, Carl and the wooden bath proof. If Carl proof Wilkinson uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> but this this tortoise. So if that's and also its flashbacks would just be uh, you know the same wall. I mean it basically spent. 
<laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so, uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, can't, get... can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl, I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't know that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's just But, but, better speaking. ones in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't mm -hmm. they? If they can live 250 odd years, our, our art can't do that. Mm -hmm. Which is what I say about our tortoise has got it right in a way, that it's, it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just, you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh <laughs> It eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does, is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no, I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You don't, uh, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just... you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did something that. went an onion, was yeah, it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain <laughs> sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion, that's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I'd put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get the rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what? So you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear. Then from it nowhere, was just like it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket. I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion. Yeah, I had to get the paper out. So what I'm saying is, it was, in, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the. What are you doing? But who's in that's charge? That's just you forgot. You forgot the onion, and you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not not like that. Not where, like it just made me think that was weird. Who, who reminded me of that? You did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. No, <laughs> you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it. Uh, oh, the, the you know the 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 meta brain, the thing <laughs> above it. No, but your brain. You, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes. Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if doing I, it, if isn't I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, he wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that then, there's two yous. It's this thing that there's there's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's there's not there's not a duality in this. 
if you, if, if you go, if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's, it, it's not, there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are, you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, like you, Rick, I'm always uh, annoyed and embarrassed when we have to concede something to Carl. And it seems though each week I look on the emails that we've got and once again someone has found some evidence to support some of the nonsense that Carl has come yeah, out with. Okay. Now you may remember we were talking about his concept of putting a giant mirror on the moon because we, why should we have to go into space? Then we could just look up at the moon and right. we'd see the earth reflected back at us and we'd think, ah, that's the earth. Isn't I it can't see myself backing down on how ludicrous this is. No, indeed. Although, um, someone, I think they're really being very picky. They were picking you up on a technical point because I think one of your, um, criticisms was the idea that the earth, the moon is moving and thus the mirror would, you know, be absent from view for some time. Uh, although people have been claiming that the, the, the moon, uh, we, there's always the same face of the moon that's, that's shown to us. There's always the same side of the moon is always visible visible to Earth. That's when they talk about the dark side of the moon. It's not but, but, just but, light, it's the fact that we can't see, it's the other no, side of the moon. but we move, so it's not always present to- Well, no, but it would, it would, it would always be present to someone on Earth. Yes, I know. Well, th this is the thing. These people don't know what I know. I know that Carl is thinking of looking up there and seeing himself <laughs> looking back. That's what he's hoping. Like when you're going, going along in a car and you see a, a shiny building, you go, oh, that's my car. <laughs> yeah, and you wait. Yeah. That's what he's hoping to see. <laughs> he's not doing it to gauge the speed of light and think and change like that. He's not doing that. He wants to look up through a telescope and wave. Yeah. That's, that's what they don't realise. I know what he's thinking. Do you want to respond, Carl? It's got, uh, the problem with the moon is. <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is dot yeah. dot dot. Yeah. The problem with the earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon, it's been, been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> it's a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. <laughs> because it's untouched and that. But uh, we don't go- we don't go to the moon to visit museums <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but- but say- <laughs> say- say like- Historical Henry, Henry, Henry the Eighth, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever, and some woman goes, Oh, this plate you've got, this was, uh, Henry the Eighth's. Uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, Here's a plate of Henry VIII, but it hasn't been used, it's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good, that. <laughs> no, it's got, it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow, they have Henry VIII's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away, why? Arthur Negus are like that in a few hundred years' time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon, you're up there, you're having a look, you're going, no one else has even been here. If but you go to the moon for research purposes, for scientific research. There, Steve. This what is do you what mean I'm there's saying? nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, yeah. and the air. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot. Well, they're way not to doing that, are they? They're just, they're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went, oh, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there. So wh why, why else would you go all that way and go? Oh, nothing here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they knocking golf balls about if, if there's really important stuff to look at? You don't see people in museums going, fancy having a knock, uh, knock some golf balls about? No, I'm looking at this vase. Oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing. Nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. <laughs> Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions, which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to, uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions. Many people will be familiar with them. Just interesting to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite word? 
Uh, don't think I've got a favourite, because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, how are you? I'm alright. It's a greeting. What about, um, I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No, stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I was suggesting things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, favourite word, <laughs> serendipity. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? Bit I think both. everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it words, up, doesn't it? Two well, words. two, you know. Uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> are we getting somewhere? Come on, two of you are the favourite, bro. I've had enough. It's just all stuff. These that. aren't words. They're <laughs> phrases. They're <laughs> all negative. They're yeah. all whinging. These aren't exactly. These aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah, that would be the. Well, it's not one word. It's loads of words. Fed up. Sick of it. Ah, oh, enough. Ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Oh, Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge. <laughs> whinge. Flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably that like on? French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just. There's a munch. There's an munch there. <laughs> so you know. How would you dislike it? How would you dislike blamange? <laughs> but just, just you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. Go on. Because I, I was thinking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alf alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by without that many letters in it. We got more words than any other yeah, language as well. Yeah, but that's because we got more, wet more letters. Well, I don't know So that. if we've created a headache, I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X, you look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, what does that mean? How's someone come up with that? <laughs> That's how it comes across to me, and it, there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's you make learn up that some- at least. Let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well let's use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the just words. Just, saying, just cut them. down the words. Stop adding. Stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll I tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but That'll it's- That'll be in the dictionary and uh But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. There yeah, is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload it on, I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So, we brought in podcast this year, but what, <laughs> but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost profound. Oh, it's amazing. It's great. Oh, God. What turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning. Excellent. Learning Will stuff. you say that? Yeah, but I, 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 everything you teach me, I take it in. It's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is uh, knowledge is uh, th there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. 
You can't say that. You're, it has to stay there. And then, then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that. It's got me thinking for a minute. It's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah. That's, that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's that's what, what art mean. does. And, yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake if it really does inflame, but... But then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus. That's, that's like a killer octopus. Mm. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, just, just... You know, when when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one, that's on the. It, it was it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at like other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's uh, yeah. there's uh, some octopus that's in the sea, mm. uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to like threaten it. It just spits in the water, and if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's just <laughs> reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one, you don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff, it can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it, I haven't gone near it, why is it getting annoyed with me? <laughs> Doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um. I don't, I don't think I, I do anything like that, I just, I think people can tell by my face when I'm, like, fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's... But you, you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh. But she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, Nobed's all right, isn't it? Because she 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 sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a Nobed. All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up. But I don't I don't really. Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, isn't it? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> After, you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it. And th that's, that's... What would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it starts spitting at you. Poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? Yeah, well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> he's kicking and calling it Nobed <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, I go, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'll just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face is Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> <laughs> That's downloadable as a ringtone, <laughs> and it's also the jingle for Carl's Diary, just reading excerpts of Carl's Diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet, didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, 
Why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's, learning their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, oh, what's your favourite philosopher? I'll go, hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why have you <laughs> yeah, Wait a minute, one? I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. And when they say, well, why do you like him, yeah, why you, do you, you like, just why, run away. Well, I, I noticed you put, um, Socrates first. Why is he your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> it just is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and he said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, the old name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers? Without going, can you spell that for me? But I don't know what else point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me? You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're from a different country and a different era. Yeah, I know. But the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go well, ancient Rome. Just just Rome. <laughs> it hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that, if you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line, go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh... Which is to, uh, am I talking to now, you or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay. But is this you or your brain I'm talking to now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using, are you gonna, are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it, there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, cos- well, I, you just said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that that's the place to start, because every, every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. wouldn't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used to yet. No, is this you or your brain you're talking about now? It was... I'm just saying about me, if I was on holiday- Yeah. And Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road- Yeah. I'd go, well, let's go, keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? to yeah. I'd say, well, hang on a minute, every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, cos I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what do you think of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his, that one isn't my favourite, that was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, well I didn't send you where you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. <laughs> I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the greatest conversations I've ever been a part of! I mean, that was incredible! <laughs> Never mind Aristotle and Socrates! That was incredible, that! Um, if someone's out there, could they make a transcript of that? Cos I think that, you know, in a thousand years' time, that'd be amazing! That was incredible, Carl. And not once was the brain used. <laughs> I 
the jingle there for Rockbusters, the um, one of the most hated quizzes in the history of mankind. Joking, aren't you? The people loathe it. Uh, I'm loving it. Well, it's the last one anyway, so just get over. Just do yeah. the answers. Oh well, we can't do another one though because we can't give the answers out. So this just yeah. This is the last one. It's just the answers for last week for people who are doing it. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, small mercies. Um, the first one that I gave you last week was the initials were C K, right? Yeah. Uh, the clue was, uh, do you know the songs that you sing at Christmas? Yeah. That bloke over there is the best at singing them. So what's, what, what are the songs you do? Carol King. Carol King, right. yeah. That works. Yeah. That works. Fair, right. well done. Uh, the second one, MG. I told the homosexual man that the great tree was mine. Right? MG. Gay. Yeah. Marvin Gaye, obviously, Marvin, but, right, but yeah. how do you get I to Marvin? Know, was it? That's my, my vine, isn't it? That, 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 I told you. My, my vine gay? Yeah. My vine? Yeah. And the last <laughs> one. <laughs> my vine gay. That's shocking. It's, it's, the, well, the last one, it was. Shit. The last one, the initial was S. Um, I said, uh, I asked you oh. if you believe in Father Christmas, what would you say? What's, what's the name for Father Christmas? Santa Claus. Right, so if if I said to you, do you believe in Father Christmas, you'd sort of go, no. Yeah, but yeah, but what what's his name again? Santa. Right, so what would you do? You'd go, oh, Santa. No, I don't. I don't I'd say that's what you do there. You go, Santa, nah, Santa, nah, Santana. So that was that was the last one. Well done to <laughs> Bob in Yorkshire. Got all three of them right. You'll get a little <laughs> signed picture. <laughs> oh well, that's it. That's the end of season two of Ricky Gervais Show. Uh, we're back soon. Check out rickygervais.com for information and upcoming news. There's a free video cast we're doing. Um, uh, we're also um, bringing out a book of the podcast. So. Yeah, that'll have a lot of the um, the best conversations we've had with Carl, and I think there have been some of them in this show. And uh, Carl has illustrated all his points and his memories to, to, I mean, that he thinks that's proof, Victorian evidence. So, I mean, it is the ramblings of a, a maniac, but you can pre-order that on... Um, Amazon. Um, uh, well, thanks very much. Uh, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Bye. and Carl Pilkington. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this programme.